What's going on? Welcome to my show. Uh, you're kicking it with your main man, Richie Rich. This episode is brought to you by, let me put my thinking cap on. There it is. Ah, yeah. Reallyhood.com and the Reallyhood podcast. Check them out. All right, today we're looking at a brand new stock. As you can see, we are on Blue Space, my, one of my favorite sites. Um, a great resource, a place where you can conversate according to certain or different topics. Really awesome stuff there. All right, and we got a new one on the, on the board for you. Guard Force, AI Company Limited. And I'll be honest with you, I don't know anything about this company, so I'm very excited to talk about you know, or, you know, go through and find some new things. Um, certainly, if you are aware of this company, hey, you know, hop in the comment section. Let me know some things I might have missed because I am not all knowing. I want to make sure that's very clear. Now, let's jump in, folks. Let's not waste time today. Here we go. Uh, the very first thing we're going to do is take a look at the profile of the company and just try to get an understanding of what the company does, only because I am, again, not very familiar with this company. All right, here, Guard Force. AI Company Limited offers cash solutions and cash handling services in Thailand. The company's services include cash and transit, vehicles to banks, ATM management, cash center operations, cash processing, coin processing, and check center services, as well as cash deposit machine solutions, such as cash deposit management and express cash services. Its customers include local commercial banks, chain retailers, coin manufacturing mints, and government authorities. The company was incorporated in 2018 and is based in Singapore. All right, so you know how we how we do it. We're going to go ahead and start this company off with with an A A grade until we find some things. I will say I'm really excited. And I like the fact that they deal with cash because if they deal with cash, that means they can't run out of cash. At least that's what my brain tells me. Uh, if you're a cash company, you're going to always have cash. It's kind of it kind of like a bank almost. You know what I mean? So. You know, that's what moves these companies, cash. And if a company is making cash or they're about, you know, transit, the transit of cash, then obviously they know how to manage cash. That's a good sign for me, you know, early on. We'll see how how that holds up. They're in the commercial services and supplies industry, the, uh, the industrial sector. All sounds good. Now, let's put my theory to the, t to the uh, test and we're going to go back just a little bit. And I would like to look at the overview to see if we can find out what their market cap and revenue looks like. All right, here we go. Um, market cap, oh wow, 48 million. Okay, so that's that's a good market cap. That's a pretty good market cap for a, for a penny stock. The revenue, 16.94 million. Yeah, so some positive things there, some very positive things there in terms of money. Right now, I'm feeling real good. I'm feeling good. Let's see how that changes over time. I am trying to see just how many employees they have, because for me, that does feel important. And while that's loading, I'm going to go ahead and check out the historical data of the company. All right. So in terms of employees, they have a ton of employees and I would imagine that to be true, given that they are involved in so many things around cash. So naturally, they would have tons of, you know, employees to see those things through. So I have to be very I'm very happy they have the the, uh, the, the, the bandwidth and the power to make these things happen. All right. So let's go here and take a look at how they've been doing over the last 30 days or so. OK, here we go. So the high over the last 30 days is 27 cents and the low is 22 cents. Right now, they're trading at 24 cents. So if the low is 22 cents and they're trading at 24 cents. They are not far off from where they where they where they uh, their lowest point. And then their average is 24 cents. So right now they're trading at their average price. This doesn't seem like a volatile company is what, what comes to me. It doesn't seem like a company that shifts a lot in the stock price. It doesn't do a lot of uh, movement. And some might call that stability. But then again, if they were very stable or, you know, as stable as I would like to think, they wouldn't be where they are right now in terms of under a dollar uh, share price or for their share price. So for me, that's, that's a little confusing. So naturally, I want to do a, a deeper dive and go back a little further and see if I can learn a little bit more about their share price. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the beginning of the year and see if I can learn or see if there's any more fluctuation in the company's movements. All right, so here we go. 
We're going back to July, uh, January 1st, and we can see that at the uh, tip of the year, the highest share price was 2016 cents. That's certainly a good thing. Their lowest is where they are right now, and that makes me a little nervous on the account that are we jumping in or are we, you know, reviewing this company near its death? You know, near the point at which nobody wants to touch this company. Have they already seen their best days? And then the average is 59 cents. So that's certainly a pretty good average. So um, I would say as of this moment, I'm going to drop them down to a B plus and B, And that's because we could be seeing the last of this company, the company's heyday. You know, they could be on the outs. So I don't think that it's an A plus stock as of that information or, you know, given that information. Um, OK, so let's keep moving. Let's keep looking through some stuff. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna go to technical. And while that's loading, I'm gonna come over here and take a look at some of their their uh, their margins. So their return on investment is zero. For me, that's a good sign. That means that they, you know, the, their uh, shareholders are not losing money. OK, when you're, when you're dealing with a penny stock, a lot of times the return on investment is negative. So the fact that it's neutral Again, it kind of lends to this, this this theory that this company is very well managed and very balanced. But we kind of expose it a little bit by going back to January. Um, so right now, I'm still trying to figure out which narrative is more is more true. Okay, um, net profit margin negative thirty. So we can see that it's not a good thing. Obviously, looking at the ratios, <clears throat> the PE ratio, profit to earning ratios. See if we can get some information there. And while wow, that's see here, okay, here we go. Uh, so the company has a negative two, uh, negative one point two nine for the PE ratio. Mm, okay, noted. And I would like to see if they have any earnings. A lot of penny stocks don't, is what I'm learning. And it would make me a little happier if they do have some information on their earnings. Okay, finally, this is like one of the first penny stocks I've uh, reviewed this way that has some type of information on their revenue and forecasts and earnings and all that kind of stuff. So the revenue is 14.2, uh, 4.2 million and the forecast is 4.2 million. I'm not sure if that's a oversight or are they saying that they expect to be right where they are in the future, which doesn't inspire an investor because it doesn't show the potential for growth. So that definitely leaves me a little confused, a little bit. OK, but let's look at some technical indicators, because sometimes that can, you know, unravel the chaos and typical of a penny stock when it comes to technical analysis and algorithms is showing that it is a strong sale. So right now they're not seeing any movement. I should say the algorithms are not seeing much movement possible for this company. And that's kind of what I'm noticing. You know, they, they seem to be hovering around 24 cents. All the time, you know, it doesn't really seem to fluctuate, and they're low as twenty-two cents. And you know, it makes me wonder, and I think it's a good time to to, to uh, ask this question: When did they hit twenty-two cents? Was this like recently, or is this something that happened a long time ago? Because obviously, that kind of matters, you know. Now that I think about it, all right. So I'm I'm going to take a quick break from technical analysis and look at the the. Uh, okay, so they hit a low last week. That makes me a little nervous on the account that the low was so recent. It wasn't far, you know, it wasn't a long time ago. And wait a minute, there, there's more 22. Wow. Okay. 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 So no, actually this stock hit 22 cents. So this stock doesn't drop below 22 cents. That's, that's pretty good in my opinion. Let me tell you why, because when you come in, you want to, you want a stock that's predictable. And this stock is showing me that it's predictable. That's what it's showing me. I know that I should probably wait to get in. Wait for it to drop to 22 cents, get in at 22 cents, and th th then the rest is profit. I can sell at 24 cents. I can sell at 26 cents. I can sell at 27 cents, and then it'll probably drop back down to 24. So what one thing I like about uh, Guard Force is that they're very predictable. You don't you don't have to guess. We see exactly what this company is going to do. You know, so I don't know. That's not something I'm I'm mad at. I like I don't. For those who don't know, I don't invest in penny stocks long term. I just jump in and get a couple of dollars and I jump out. And this is the prime or a prime stock to make that kind of uh, movement. You know, jump in at 22 cents and jump out when it hits 24. Now, the big question for me right now as I'm talking is 
do I jump in now or do I just say, hey, let me just wait wait for it to drop to 22, you know, set a limit buy or buy, a limit buy order for 22 cents. And whenever it hits 22 cents, I'm in. And then, hey, there's, there's nothing but profit beyond that. I don't have to worry about this company dropping down to 21 cents, 20 cents, 16 cents or something like that, because the data shows that it basically bottoms out at 22 cents. So I think right then and there that hey this is not good this is not a bad looking stock right now so what i'm gonna do is uh i'm gonna go back up to an a because i or a minus rather because i think i understand how to make this stock work for me jump in at 22 cents and then get out once it hits 24 cents if you want to make a quick turnaround but if you would really feel like testing the waters maybe wait a little while as we can see um the high was 27 cents i want to see when that happened when did it hit 27 cents it hit 27 cents on october 6th every stock had a bump on uh, October 4th and 6th. So for me, that's not really, you know, that's not a... And look here, you'll see that it doesn't change. Look at this. I'm kind of late to noticing that. Maybe you've seen it a long time ago, but there's no movement. I like that and I don't like it at the same time. Um, on the negative side, it tells me that this company doesn't have a lot of value. There's not a lot of interest in this company. Uh, on the positive side, it just lets me know I, I can put money here and I, I don't have to be afraid and worry every day uh, that the company's going to, you know, do something wacky. You know what I mean? So there's some positives here and some negatives. And it just depends on which way you want to look at it. <sighs> it's still early. Let me do some more tinkering. But it's still very early. But yeah, this is basically showing there's no movement there for hourly trading. But this is very, very rare. Anytime you see a strong buy on a penny stock, something something's good going on okay a anytime that's just my personal opinion all right and by the way i'm not i'm not your financial uh your, your financial advisor so please do your own research day trading it doesn't recommend it in terms of the in terms of the algorithms um weekly and monthly are usually strong sales for penny stocks but i'm surprised that that is not uh, a different thing today because this stock doesn't really you know it it, it, it does one or two things it's either a 22 24 or 27. That's pretty much what this stock does. I like the fact that this stock is predictable. Okay, I'll, I'll go on record as saying that. But now I want to go ahead and look at the stock's history to see if I can find out any information with regards to their stock splits. So uh, GFAI. I'm not sure what I'm, what I'm about to find out here, but I am very curious. So zero stock splits. That's a great, that's a great signal for me. Okay, I'm going to bump it up to an A. No stock splits. And I'm going to do a secondary search because I'm learning that StockSplitHistory.com is not the definitive source for stock splits. Sometimes, you know, I, I, I actually had someone tell me like, hey, that this company actually does have some stock splits or reverse splits and stock split history didn't know them. So I'm just going to do a, a second a second search just to ensure that my findings are that are accurate. Okay, uh, limited history of, let's see here. So Seeking Alpha is a very reputable source. And you see, the, oh, see, see you see this, you see? All right, you notice that? Okay, there it is. So apparently there was a split back in 2021. So it's making me very iffy about StockSplitHistory.com because it appears to me that information can be a little inaccurate in some cases. All right, but yeah, do you have it? So maybe we, yeah, I, I would argue that we have to include that. That is not something I'm gonna ignore. So on that account, let's go back down to a B minus. I'm gonna go back down. All right, next, I would like to take a look at some news just to see what's going on with this company. Uh, very low key company, I've never heard of it before. So I wanna see if there's any news that I need to be paying attention to. All right, so Golf Force to present. All right, so this news is on the 19th. So that was last last week, so that's a good sign for me. I like that personally. All right, Golf Force to present at the LD Micro main event. Um, they have a micro cap, okay. Uh, results for the fiscal 2022 year or 2022 year. Um, AI partners with, okay, awarded a five-year contract by Bank of Thailand to manage. So they got, you know, different contracts. That's a good sign. All good news here. I mean, we had a 10% drop, um, on july 14th but for the most part this stock has been doing very well so this is uh august 31st i would like to see what took place with the stock price on august 20 what was that august 21st i believe it was so i want to take a look and see august 31st i want to see what happened with the share price on that day 
All right, so I'm going to go back a little bit. Let's go back to the 30th, the day, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the day before, and see if we can find out any information. All right. Okay, here we go. So there was a huge spike up to 36 cents. Now, this stock, we know what this stock does. Uh, it usually bounces from, at least right now, what the stock does. It bounces from 22 cents to about 27. But apparently on the 31st, it had this huge spike and it went up to 37 cents. All right. And over this time, the high was 50 cents and the low again was 22 cents. So it's a lot of upside. I'm willing to say that. And I want to make sure I clarify when it comes to, um, you know, stocks and companies and, and investing in the stock market, there are no promises. So everything is a hope. You know what I mean? When you're making a decision. So I'm hoping that what I'm seeing is accurate. Uh, but it shows me, in my opinion, the stock has a lot of upside and the average is still 27 cents. So a lot of upside unless this company is on the outs, unless this company is about to have some of its most uh, uh, more difficult days. That is um, that's something I'm still trying trying to uh, decipher. Is this company on its way out? Is it on its way you know, to the uh, to over the counter or being delisted? These are questions I'm asking myself as I talk. Um, now, let's go ahead and check out the, uh, the short percentage float. I want to see if there's anyone that is banking or betting against this company. And if so, I want to see how many people are doing so. All right. Still positive vibe for this company. I, I'm still very optimistic about this company. Very optimistic. And B minus, not a terrible score. So let's keep looking. All right, so we have the short percentage float as of September 30th, 4%. Okay, all right, so that's not zero, obviously, but that is not uh, that is not an incredible number either. So that is not terrible. That is not terrible. That's not terrible, okay? But there are some people that are looking at this stock as a liability. There are some people who look at this stock and say it's possible that this company could have some trouble. So it is not 100% you know, in the clear. There are some people who, are, who see uh, see indicators of failure. So you have to consider that as you look through everything. So I wanna also go ahead and come here to stock Twitch, which will show me the mood of the investors that are currently in the company. And let's take a look and see how they're doing, how they feel. And at least right now, it's looking like this company doesn't have a stock Twitch. Which is very that would be surprising from you know surprising information. I doubt that's true. Here we go. Ho hopefully, uh, yeah, it looks like we are we're gonna have something here. Okay, here we go. Uh, this this uh, investor saying must fill the gap at 0.5, and let's keep looking. Lost six watch today, so this person is watching the people watching the company, and apparently six watchers have uh, lost interest in the company, and I think that investor thinks that that's an indicator that. You know this company is not really moving or generating cash flow all right i became a bit a bag holder on this one can't believe it uh, can't believe it so a bag holder is someone who invested at a certain price and is pretty much just waiting to make some make a profit it's possible that this person might might have come in to this share price at maybe like 50 cents and we can see that it's a long way from going back to those kind of those kind of numbers right now it's stuck between 22 cents and 27 so the the price that you jump in is incredibly important because if you get, you get in too high you can have some issues now one thing i do like about where it is right now is that it is very low it's it's, it's, it's trading at 24 cents which means we are right near the bottom of where this barrel falls so if you get in at 24 cents, you know, you're not going to drop unless something catastrophic happens, which is possible. But you're not going to get, you know, get steamrolled because, you know, it's going to probably drop at 22 cents and then bounce up. So it appears that 22 cents is the floor. And if you're getting in near the floor, then that means there's only up to look up to. Right. It's only a ceiling to uh, expect. So this person got in way too early, it, it appears. All right. And let's see. Could be bottomed out. Right. Uh, yeah, so he's saying the same thing I just said. GFAI could be bottom ballot. This could be the bottom. And at this point, the, only the sky is the limit. The only problem is you don't know if it's going to crack through that bottom or you don't know if, you know, the NASDAQ is going to push back against the company and say, hey, you got to, you know, you got to, we're going to uh, delist you because you're not generating any, any uh, money. 
All right, this person said they're watching another week of nothing. Exactly. So the morale of this, the, the uh, investors in this company seems to be very low. They don't seem to be inspired by much because there's not a lot going on. I can see myself investing in this company and just kind of just folding my arms like, hey, one of these days, they'll jump up to 27 cents. One of these days. And when it does, I'll cash out and then wait for it to drop back down to 22 cents. That's if it doesn't drop below that. But again, it's been, you know, the floor has been 22 cents since September. I want to say September 23rd. So clearly this stock is not, you know, a dangerous. I wouldn't I wouldn't say this was a, a dangerous company. I'm sorry. Too, too bad this doesn't follow the market. Looking pretty good for a Friday. Um, so this person is saying that this stock doesn't do what the market does. It has its own algorithm. It has its own flow. And I'm not necessarily opposed to that. All right. Let me see. 200K borrow and days to cover increased. Watching for that volume over the next hour. What volume? I mean, I haven't seen much value from this company like at all you know um that's one of the things that's throwing me off so it does have some value there's been about six hundred thousand interactions with the company on the market but man that's actually kind of low all right but anyway let's go ahead and look at doco doco is going to tell me a lot of information that i want to know as an investor personally we're going to go to the filings i want to see if this stock has gotten any notices from nasdaq or anything like that because that will definitely say a lot. Okay, I don't see anything there. I'm looking for certain keywords. Notice. Okay, notice of effectiveness. That's not the kind of notice I'm afraid of necessarily. All right, I want to go to view all. I want to see current reports. I want to see if there's any notices here. So it doesn't appear that NASDAQ has given them any type of notice of a potential delisting. But... As I've said before, I'm going to say it again. I am going to start doing more Google searches because Google has a really far reach. And obviously, if I type in these words, delisting or uh, let me see, maybe even notice of delisting or something to that effect, I should get every article that could possibly be pulled. OK, uh, here we go. So something. FGA does not regret compliance by September 6th. So Seeking Alpha seems to be a very reputable source because this is the second source. So I'm going to pull some of these up. And I know, hold up, wait a minute. And I know this doesn't look professional, but who cares? This is what you got to do. You have to dig through everything and, you know, put your pride to the side and find out the answers you're looking for. So anyway, it looks like uh, Golf Force received a notification from NASDAQ notifying them that it is not in compliance. Wow. OK, so once again, I, I just didn't see it in Doco. That is not to say it doesn't exist. I just didn't see it. So let's go back further. Let's go to maybe this is why we didn't click the second page. Is the notice on the second page? Uh, let me see. No, no, I don't see a notice necessarily. Um, OK. OK, here it is. Garfers receives NASDAQ notification letter regarding minimum bid price deficiency. So that happened on the 16th. And this article states that. OK, good. So what happened in that scenario was that it was on the third page. You know, a lot of times I'll look at the first page and keep it moving. But what I'm going to start doing is just going to good old fashioned Google and Google. Google will find the, uh, the articles for me. So if it happened in March. Six months from March is when the company is in trouble. So March, April, May, June, July, August, September. And I think this company even stated that they have until September 6th to regain compliance. And as you can, as you obviously know, today is October 22nd. So they're well behind. Uh, they're well, well out of, uh, you know, compliance. And at any point, this company could have some issues unless they ask for an extension or something like that. But even so, there's no guarantee that NASDAQ will grant the extension. So I would say that is huge, huge news. And that changes everything. You could almost argue I should probably start with Doco. But I like to have fun and look at everything outside of Doco because uh, sometimes the narrative is built better and it helps you you know, better decide. I'm going to go with C. Uh, C, for, C for careful. Because you got to be careful here when, um, you know, when NASDAQ speaks, you know that anything could happen to this company. If you jump in, you know that at any moment you can wake up and see that this company is probably going to be in trouble. So uh, but yeah, that's a huge finding. I'm so glad I'm starting to incorporate Google, Google because 
man, that certainly might have saved me some money there. And then you obviously have, uh, have Yahoo Finance. They probably are going to give me a whole bunch of information. An integrated security solutions provider, NASDAQ requires list. Okay, we know all this stuff. Uh, I'm just trying to see if there's any more information to consider. Let's see here. Uh, so we know it. They, we we know they had their. Uh, they've been notified. We know that they have until September sixth. So the question is, like, what happens after September September sixth? Has there been any new information? Maybe that is what I should be looking for. Uh, you know, now that we've you know went or gone past that time, has there been any updates on where you know they're standing and where things are? You see partners with Riverside. So they're making a lot of moves. You can see a lot of moves. And that could be something that, you know, endears them to the to the uh, stock exchange. Like, hey, they're making some changes. They're making some moves. You know, they're, you know, having meetings. So they're they're actively trying to engage the market. They're not just sitting there and saying, hey, we, we can't do it. We, we're not going to. So that could be something that makes the NASDAQ kind of hold off or give an extension. Right. So those are all good findings. Let's see, we're just trying to find that diamond in the rough. That's kind of what this process is. That's what this show does. We're trying to find the diamond in the rough, the one that no one sees. And, you know, this is what it is. Revenue is forecast to grow by 20 percent. So this website gives me more of a, a narrative based understanding of what what's going on with the company. Share, shareholders have been uh, substantially diluted. We know that. All right. Currently unprofitable. We saw that not a lot of movement there. Volatile share price. I'm not sure if I agree with that. But if you think about over the over the last three months, then that is very possible. Over the last three months, this company probably has been very volatile. Uh, not over the last 30 days, over the last one month. Does not have a meaningful market cap at 13 million. Now, that's confusing because I saw the market cap as being very meaningful unless I missed something or unless that website is outdated. OK, because when we looked here, we saw that the market cap was 48 million. And this is another thing to point out. It's really good to cross reference. Sometimes one company might say or one website might say one thing, but another company might say another. So one of the smartest things you can do as an investor is cross reference different articles, kind of like what we did here today by going to Google. Uh, we didn't just depend on the word of stock. Uh, what is it? Uh, Stocksplithistory.com or the word of doco.com. Even though doco did have that have that information, it took more digging to find it because the notice came out so long ago. And I think that also speaks to the fact that this company is making a lot of moves. So that notice is pushed back a little bit and on page two or three because it's, there's been a lot of reports and changes and things going on with the company. So I think I am prepared to make my final ruling on how I feel about the company. But before I do, let's just have some fun. I don't think that this company is a company I'm going to jump in. And if I do decide to jump in, it won't be at a substantial amount or I won't be placing a, a substantial amount within the company. Um, at the very most, I might do 2000 shares just to see what happens. And the purchase price, we know the purchase price by now. We've seen it a lot. Uh, right now it's 24 cents. I might even place a limit buy at 22 cents. Like I'm not in a rush to get into this company. Um, yeah, I'm not in a rush. <laughs> you know what I mean? So. Uh, I might even wait till it drops to 22 cents and just put, put like a little trip line there. And if it hits 22 cents, I'll jump in because I know it's money to be made. It doesn't seem to drop below 22 cents for some reason. And then I will probably set my sale price for 20, 27 cents. Um, and yeah, so no commission whatsoever, of course, because I use Robinhood. And let's see what we have. Let's see what we have. So I would spend $400 on this company. And if it if I were to sell at twenty seven cents, I would make a profit of one hundred dollars. So not a lot of money, not not a lot of money to be gained there. Um, you know, not a lot of money in this particular investment. So again, not too fond of the company at this moment. But I, you know, there's still something there that's like telling me like this company could do very well. I like how how uh, integrated they are with different facets of their particular market. I like how they have some of the best backing. You know, we saw the Bank of Thailand invest in the company. So those type of things lend me to believe that there's some hope there. Um, but I think I need to see what happens with the NASDAQ because here's what I think is going to happen. I think they're going to do a reverse split. They did one back in 2021 and I can see them doing another one uh, pretty soon, probably in November, just to get themselves back in clear standing. And then from there, you know, we see how the, how the chips fall. But um, 
I'm going to go with a solid C. Let me know if you agree with that assessment. Let me know if I missed some things. Let me know if you have other companies you want me to check out. But that is all for me for, for today. It's your main man, Richie Rich. Thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next one.